Hi guys, this is a special topic in thermodynamics. I'm going to talk about Feynman ratchets in the thermodynamics of cell transport. Um, cells are bloody amazing things. They are really quite complicated and minuscule machines. For example, uh, things in the cell can be made to move around from one place to the other. How do cells transport stuff around? Well, there's many ways of doing that. One of them is by diffusion, for example, but there are active forms of transport. Can we understand and copy the mechanisms to make nanomachines, for example? Now, here's a picture here of the kinesin dimer, uh, uh, which is shown. It's an abstract picture. These things here are not atoms. They're supposed to indicate some very complex protein. Each of these is a subunit of a protein. And uh, attached to this uh, protein uh, is one end of the kinesin dimer, which is here. This is maybe the tubulin. Uh, tubulin uh, is a material that is for, you can see it formed when a cell splits into two and the cell has to transport material from one half of the cell to the other half of the cell. But this is the, this is the kinesin dimer, which tends to move up and down. Now, how does it do that? How does it just, how does it do it? It turns out that um, the kinesin material kind of walks along this protein. Now, the fact that it walks along the protein means that uh, energy has to be supplied to the system. Work has to be supplied somehow, and that work comes in the form of delta G. And the delta G comes from specific chemical reactions, specifically the decomposition of adenosine triphosphate to adenosine diphosphate. You don't really need to know what these molecules are, but the triphosphate, one of the triphosphate bonds breaks, releasing a certain amount of free energy, and that energy is released into this system and allows this protein to walk. Actually, it's, it's controlled by voltage rather than the chemical energy is converted into voltage and then it's allowed to walk. Now, it turns out that this motion is a sort of walking motion. It's quite remarkable that quantities this small can display a kind of walking motion hand over hand. There are different molecular pieces that join uh, that join onto this protein. This is a very abstract picture. It's not at all chemistry, and biochemists love to make abstract pictures like this, and chemists love to look and see what the atoms are inside here. And they can do that using X-ray crystallography. Now, but the problem is this. Um, even if energy is supplied as random electrical impulses, the kinesins only move in one direction. Now, how is it possible how is it possible to change random energy into directed energy? This is amazing. How does it move in only one direction with all the water molecules and everything bumping into it, like I showed you in the lectures, the Brownian motion? How does it overcome the Brownian motion? Well, the physicist Richard Feynman uh, proposed the mechanism was much like a ratchet connected to a paddle wheel. So here's, here's Richard Feynman's model of how this thing might work. He imagined uh, a wheel, a paddle wheel, connected in here, uh, and inside this paddle wheel is a gas uh, of atoms, and over here uh, it's connected by a rod to another uh, ratchet wheel. We have here a ratchet, which is a very stiff thing, and what that means is, in any kind of ratchet, you can move it one way, but you can't move it the other way. In other words, uh, it, you, for some reason, because of the shape of this, it's, the barrier to going left is much higher than the barrier to going right. And this is a gas at high temperature, and this is a gas at low temperature. Now what happens is, in the gas at high temperature, the gas molecules hit this paddle randomly, but every now and then, uh, some of the molecules hit more in one direction than the other direction. In that case, just randomly, uh, the paddle wheel moves in one direction and it snaps the ratchet in uh, by one slot. So it moves into one slot, one direction, and it can't move backwards. 
and then it has to wait a while until the molecules decide they want to hit in the same direction and it will ratchet another movement. So this is called the Feynman ratchet. It's an ingenious idea and it is in fact the method by which kinesin works. Uh, it might seem that this device will uh, always turn around, maybe a bit slowly, actually not that slowly, depends on the size of the systems and the temperature, but it can only turn around if the temperature of the gas in this is hotter than the temperature of the gas in the second box. And that's what Richard Feynman worked, worked out. It's an amazing device. If they were at the same temperature, the second law of thermodynamics would be violated, uh, meaning to say that we could get work out of a system for nothing, or uh, the entropy of the universe itself would decrease. That's the second law. He proved that that would be impossible if these two things were at the same temperature. So you can see the power of thermodynamics. Now, I'm not going to go through his argument, but you can look it up if you're interested. Okay, now, as I said before, in kinesin, the power mechanism uh, by which uh, the kinesin rotates and walks along the uh, tubulin framework is not due to a temperature difference, but it's actually due to a voltage difference. But it's neither here nor there. And the voltage difference is controlled by ATP synthase. I will show you ATP synthase in the lectures. Very interesting. Or you can look it up. <laughs> 